programs are very, very new as far as uh, ones that are this technologically advanced. Um, and my research is really focusing on, on this network. Every time someone checks out a bike and every time someone checks one back in, I get a data point. And so I'm analyzing kind of the system, who's using it, where they're going, um, and what they're doing with it. So, so as I said, it's not that common just yet. Um, in Australia, there's really only two large ones. There's the Brisbane and the Melbourne system. And in the United States, there's a number of small ones, but the big ones are in Washington, D.C., Denver, Minneapolis, Boston, and San Antonio. Uh, but they're spreading really rapidly, as, which I'll get to in a second. So they're, they're not all that common. In Europe, they're, they're decently common. They're in most of the major cities at this point, um, and they have a legacy there. But once again, this is a really new form of mass transit. But a lot of cities are looking into it, and I mean a lot, um, especially in the United States. New York City, Portland, Chicago, Los Angeles, these are all cities that are getting bike share programs in the next year. And they want it because it offers a lot more choice. Um, currently, car seems to be the dominant form of transportation in most cities. And uh, although that offers a lot of uh, great options for a lot of people, not everyone can afford a car. And having so much car use has resulted in a lot of unintended cons consequences. And one of the ones I'm most interested in is congestion. Uh, congestion is crippling to an economy, and that's something of serious concern. And so bike share programs can really offer more choice. So if you see rush hour traffic and you only have a mile to go, rather than grabbing your car, you grab a bike and uh, you can hopefully get there faster. Bike share programs also offer more access. Um, certain communities ne can't necessarily afford the more expensive transportation options. So this opens up whole neighborhoods and whole pockets of areas uh, to, to people to live and to work and to be in. Transportation is really about access. We don't really think about it all that, all that much because it's we usually think it's just about getting from one place to another. But especially among low-income communities, they're really aware that getting from one place to another, that could be to the grocery store, that could be to loved ones, that could be to healthcare. Um, and so improving access for all, all levels is really, really important right now. Of course, bicycling tends to have a lower carbon footprint. Um, their bike share certainly has some carbon footprint, but it is considered a more sustainable form of transportation than uh, most others. There's also some public health benefits. Um, how I got into planning was I was researching diabetes and obesity, and those rates are really rising in Australia, in the US, and in many places around the world. Um, and those rises in obesity and diabetes rates mirror a decline in, uh, in, in active transportation use. So getting people to be active again and incorporating it into their daily routine is really a priority of a lot of cities today. It's also affordable for individuals. Um, the, I think the bike share for a yearly subscription here, I believe it's $60 for the entire year. Um, so if you use it a few times even, it's, it's, it's a reasonable option. And it's relatively inexpensive for cities. Uh, when we talk about transportation investments, we're usually talking about tens of billions, or tens of millions of dollars, sometimes into the billions. Uh, bike share programs are not all that expensive relative to, to other infrastructure projects. But I think the number one reason is they're fun. I was in Washington, D.C last January, and I've never, I've been to D.C. many times, and it was never, never as easy it was that, as it was that time, because it was just so easy to get around, and it was so fun. We really had a great time doing it, and so I think it's a, it's a really good thing for cities to do if they, if they so choose. So I'm doing research, and you might be asking, you know, why, I get this question a lot, why do we need transportation research? Um, well, it's kind of like a lot of other fields. Uh, it definitely, especially because we're using public money, we want to make sure it's going to be the best use. And if we can improve the transportation system, we really want to. But currently, there's limited existing research. As I said, this is a really new program, so um, a new form of mass transit. So we really need to start looking and analyzing the, the systems that are happening right now and seeing if it actually is a good option. Um, are, the, are the costs outweighing the benefits, or is it the other way around, or how does it work? And in my opinion, the most important reason is that these programs are rapidly spreading across the globe. Uh, they're in Asia, they're in Latin America, they're in Europe, and in the United States, every year they're adding more and more programs, but we know so little about them. Uh, we definitely need to think a little bit harder about our investments and look into them a little bit more. Uh, before we continue investing and continue growing. Uh, but it is a really exciting time on the transportation field to see these sort of changes happening. Uh, we just need to make sure that we have solid data to back up our statements. So I, this is where I come in. I'm at the University of Queensland, um, and we're working with Brisbane City Council to analyze the existing program uh, that we have here. And so 
Australia has uh, has never before, neither of the bike share programs have ever before released their data. So this is a, this is a really big project and we've got a couple of professors in addition to me working on it. Um, and we're hoping to publish our research uh, next year. We're looking at two main systems. We're not just looking at Brisbane City Cycle, but also DC's Capital Bike Share. Uh, DC's Capital Bike Share is uh, definitely the most successful system in the United States. And the reason we chose these cities is not only do we have the data available for both, but they started at a, within weeks of each other. They're a similar size system, and um, they're, let's see, yeah, they're, they're relatively large, and um, at least DC's is pretty popular. So it's pretty, it's pretty exciting, exciting to have that data and to be able to do that research. But this isn't about comparing their performance necessarily. DC and Brisbane are two very, very different systems. It's a city, and they're, DC is a much, much larger city. It's a much denser city. Um, so there's a lot of variance here. It's more about lessons learned. Um, and I've learned a few lessons already that I kind of wanted to share with you. I don't have a lot of analysis done, but I've, I've read quite a bit about the systems and I've done some analysis to, to, to come up with some lessons already. 